Welcome to another episode of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. We're on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Again, another shout out to Cam and Mace, my guys, my co-host Blue, to the fans. Keep your questions and comments coming. My question to you, my friend. Ready to make this a full-time gig? Full-time. It's not full-time already? We no, we The episodes is coming out back to back to back. I know. I'm making sure that you're not ready to leave. Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm yeah. comfortable. Okay. What you mean? Okay. It's my chair. Okay, that's what Somebody I'm talking Somebody trying about. to take my spot. No, 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 no. You good? <laughs> it's not a 10 day. How you feeling today? I'm good. Everything's well. All right, good, good, good. We got some good questions. You always do. Thank you. This is what I need. <laughs> this is the type of energy I need. Thank you. We got some really good ones, though, today. It's exciting. All right, I'm ready. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code MARK. That's M A R K. And play the pick'em game. That's our favorite. We got some good questions, man. I want to know, recently I watched Stephen Curry and D'Lo go back and forth talking trash. Great game. I want to know who was the trash talker that you knew in the 90s? Who was, who was talking big? It's pretty good. I got to say a couple of guys stand out that I played against. Gary Payton, Charles Barkley, and Larry Bird. I don't know if people know this, but Gary Payton, I was a junior in college, never heard of Gary Payton. Now all of a sudden we're getting a guy from Oakland, California that's visiting St. John's, thinking about coming to St. John's. Obviously I'm his tour guy, go to the club, turn up. <laughs> we're at the club and this dude on a Friday night in New York City, the first night he goes out with me, he goes, calls me aside in the club. He's like, I want to commit to St. John's. I'm like, <laughs> You want to commit to St. John? So oh, I, you were, you were that recruiter. You was you was that point I mean, guard. We turned up. <laughs> so next morning, tell coach we have no room for Gary Gary Payton. So Gary Payton was ready to come to St. John's and be my backcourt partner my senior year. You're talking about a Hall of Fame talent and an incredible all time great. We turned him down. So he goes to Oregon State. The rest is history. But an incredible trash talker. Next guy is Charles Barkley. Trash talker extraordinaire. Quick story about him. I'm in my second year, I believe, playing for the Knicks. He's playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm not a natural scorer, but this is one of those days where I got it going. So down the stretch of the game, I'm scoring, he's scoring. We're talking trash to each other. End of the game, we finally win, get into the locker room. Media runs towards me. I'm like, what, what is going on? Charles Barkley said, y'all bet on the game. What? <laughs> he said, Barkley said, y'all bet on the game. So next day, the New York headlines in the papers, Jax and Barkley bet on game. So now the commissioner at the time, David Stern, sends a message. Charles Barkley and Mark Jackson get to the New York headquarters immediately. We take the train, go to the headquarters. I'm, I'm in second year. I'm like, this is crazy. This dude talking about we betting the game. Like, it's not. I'm scoring him like I bet I cross your dude over and score on him. Next thing, he comes up and said, I bet I dunk on y'all. He does it. So we're in the commissioner's office. And the commissioner's like, there's no betting in basketball. It will not be tolerated. I'll throw you guys out of the league. David Stern? David Stern. How dare you guys even insinuate that you're betting? I'm like, this is my second year. I ain't make, you know, I ain't make that kind of money. I'm not set for life. I need some help. So I'm panicking in the office. So he says, I'm going to give you 15 minutes. I'll be right back with my decision. So I'm sitting there, Charles Barkley, a all-star, superstar, and it's just me, worried about my future. While the commissioner leaves out the room, Charles Barkley looks at me and goes, I bet you he won't throw us out the league. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this, I'm like, this dude is crazy, man. Look, the more you tell me this, these stories, I feel like you, you was just clowning during your career. No, look, <laughs> this, this, this dude just crazy. I'm like, he was and, having a blast. It's an ultimate trash talker on the court and obviously one of the all-time greats uh, as far as TV and, and uh, media is concerned. And, and Larry Bird, everybody is well-documented his trash talk. And he'd tell you what he was going to do, when he was going to do it, how he was going to do it, and he did it. Truly a, a great... All-time great player and an all-time great trash talk. It brings me to the point of we, we grew up in, in New York City and the legendary Rucker Park, Dykeman, places where people find their name off of going at NBA players or people who have a resume. You have any experience of, of going to play at some of those parks and having maybe somebody that nobody knew about bark up the wrong tree where you had to, had to set it straight? There's a million stories like that. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, this is crazy. I'm the one guy that everybody want to challenge. That's, I mean, you, just you know you. it. You know it. <laughs> you, you've lived it. I mean, you watched it. No, that's true. We, we can go play, and I'm going through the motions, just making plays, and the dude all of a sudden want to pick me up full court, try to turn me 100 times, no double I got him, want to isolate me. I'm like, why? 
I guess because I just got a regular, regular game that somehow f- found a way to, to make it. But I'm the guy that people think they got a real chance. Because you have a regular game. What about the fact that you talk trash? I do talk trash. You talk, <laughs> you talk, <laughs> you're acting like, woe is me. Like, you're not the one. I talk trash because I sense it. I, I see in their eyes that they think they, 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 they got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, my, it's my whole life. Whether it's the park, it doesn't matter where I go at any stage in my career, whether I was a pro whether I was an amateur, whether I was retired, at, at all times, I was challenged. There's a guy, let me give him a shout out. We used to play Tuesdays and Thursdays. You're well aware of that, Brother Detroit. His name go. is Kevin Tate. He's a comedian, well known. Hey, you're going to put his whole gov- him out gov- there. out there? So That's one day crazy. he challenged me to a one on one. And I said, I, uh, I humbly submit. This, it, 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 he was, it was going on for months. Like he was talking trash. Great dude, but he was talking trash. So it was going on for months. So I said, you know what? Let's play one on one. Enough, enough is enough. But not for free. I'll bet you ten thousand dollars if you beat me. I'll give you ten thousand dollars in cash. I humbly submit, which is a lot of money. I, I knew he wasn't gonna win. And if you lose, you gotta leave this gym with just your underwear on and leave all your stuff. And and, and I'll take care of it from that point. So, make a long story short, we played one on one. I beat him. His sneakers are still hanging up on the telephone pole and clothes is in the trash. So he left the gym and. And some people said, don't, leave, don't let him leave the gym that way. You know, you proved your point. No, he would have taken my money. <laughs> he would have taken my money. He would have taken my money. That's Kevin oh, Tate. Oh, he definitely would have taken your money. He definitely would have taken your money. But left it was a good out one, of though, Detroit. right? Left, no, it wasn't a good one. <laughs> left hand, crafty, out of Detroit, to score. Outstanding basketball player for comedian. For yeah. a comedian, he's outstanding. Why you got to ask for a comedian? Why? He's going to catch that when you say for a comedian. Yeah, a little subtle. You appreciate the comedic genius there. He going to want the rematch. The rematch coming? There's no rematch. That's it? I'm, that's I'm done. What, that's That's what one thing you taught me. You Get out while you're ahead. When you win, when you win, it's time for you to hit the deuces. There's, what is the rematch for? I proved my point. Sometimes, so you, sometimes somebody think you didn't get the best of them. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't his best day. All he has to do is drive by the gym look up at the telephone pole, see his kick see his still shoes? hanging up there, and it's a constant reminder. So that, that's, that's, there's no rematch. Oh, I tell you, man. though, the player that I played with that trash talked the best, obviously, Reggie Miller. That's obvious? Obviously. Obviously. It was like that? Wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 I, and I would just bait him and bait him and feed him. And we'd be on the back of the bus. We'd w- ride into Madison Square Garden, and um, the fans are yelling and screaming. Reg, Reg, I'm like, this is your night, baby. This is your night. This dude, I hype him up so much, he bangs out the back of the bus window and he's yelling and screaming at the people with the, with the window. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, man? This is New York City, man. He couldn't even go out. I had to go get breakfast sandwiches for both of us because it was safe for me in New York City, but it wasn't safe for him. So I'd go get breakfast sandwiches, juice and whatever, bring it in. We have food in, in the hotel as opposed to, because he was, he was, he was the ultimate trash talker, and and don't let him get it going. What was it like on, on trips? Like, I know y'all, I know y'all do other things besides play basketball. So being around Reggie Miller, who's a, an amazing trash talker, Michael Jordan, who's an amazing trash talker, Charles Barkley. What is it like y'all playing a card game? Oh. How, how does that competitiveness come across? It'd be a YouTube channel. It'd be, <laughs> yeah, it'd, be it'd be a YouTube channel. It just doesn't. It doesn't end with basketball. It's in life. It's in everything. The competitive spirit, the competitive juices. Even I can remember a Halloween one day, and the competitive juices. I'm dressed up as whatever. Reggie Miller knocks on the door. I don't know who it is. We open up the door. You remember we're in Indiana. This dude is decked out in total Michael Jackson gear, <laughs> glove, shiny glove, hat and all, doing the moonwalk. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, man? You're a grown man, man. If you don't get off my front porch, he had but to come with Mike. He had to, he he had to set it off. He won. Yeah, he won. And he's that is singing the tunes man. and everything. It's 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 competitive juices flowing across the board, not just basketball. Somebody needs a, a mama. There goes that man. Somebody been cooking lately. Who's that? Our boy Victor, man. Oh no, quite. Oh, the Vic- I, now he's our boy. Huh? I can remember. What I can, you mean? I can remember going to Victor Wembanyama's game in uh, Las Vegas with Jeff Van Gundy, and I remember two minutes in, both of us saying, "This guy's a superstar." Guy's a generational talent and, and truly deserving of all the accolades he was getting at the time. I remember coming home and saying to you, he's a big time talent right now. He's a superstar right now. You was like, what are you talking about? No way, no way, no way. And now all of a sudden, you say, our boy? Wow. No, no, I don't mean wow. to throw you underneath the bus. Oh, you don't? No, you do. The no, bus the bus is, is here. <laughs> you just going to push me in the street? No, you, you agree now, but it took some time. 
it took some time because honestly, they gave it to Wimby so so easily as far as like he's he's the next up. When I I, I watched See, everybody always say I'm LeBron guy, but I got to bring it up. They cooked LeBron. They made LeBron fight tooth and nail for every accolade. Did we forget? Huh? LeBron James in the Hummer in high school. He deserved the Hummer. I, I agree. He, yeah. Don't act like they, they made him fight for every. He, he earned it. No, his game. He came in as a superstar and put a snap on the game and continues to do that. That's true. Why is everything a competition? Give Wimby his due. Let, let him let him know. Uh, no, no, Wimby got his due. I'm just saying what my mentality was looking at somebody who was just playing his summer league. I'm like, let's give the dude a chance. Let me see what he's working with. He's proven. Look, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna keep it a buck, y'all. Wimby, we ain't never seen nobody like him. I can't say not a not a negative exactly. about, about the dang. No, I was just saying, you see Michael Jackson on American Bandstand or Soul Train. I don't need to see him 10 years later. I know he's a superstar and an all-time great right then and there. Are you kidding me? That just flew, no, that flew over my head. I'm not at the same age as you. I don't know what American what. <laughs> oh, forget it, man. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna walk you through this part. Look, you said American Bandstand. Yes, yeah, Soul Train. Soul, Soul Train. Train. I know American Soul Train. American Bandstand was was Soul Train for you know, white people. What's your go-to move when you go down like a Soul Train line? Like you got. Oh, I got the two step down. You got the pat. two step down pat. Two step you got... down pat. You know that. <laughs> Come on, man. With the spin? Don't try to do too much. No, no, no you're not going to hype me to spin huh? and then say, what, is, what was that? <laughs> it's a solid two-step. Got it down pat. Oh, Can't man. go wrong. Back to Wimby. I brought him up because he currently has more blocks than 80% of the NBA. What does that say about Wimby? And what does that say about the state of the NBA today? I don't think it's an indictment on the state of the NBA today. I think we already know the defense is, is not up to par and they've documented the fact commissioner and, and Joe Dumas trying to put some new rules in play to make it easier to defend and make it tougher to score. So we know where we are defensively, but I think it's, it's more a stamp on Wimby, the imposing figure that he is on the floor on both sides of the ball. We know the impact that he has on the offensive end and defensively he's going to win not one, not two, not three. He's going to win plenty of defensive player of the year. And I like his mentality. He's not pumping himself up. He understands that his team has underachieved and not put together a great record this year. And he says, Rudy Gobert deserves the defense player of the year. Now, how many guys would say, no, it's me, it's me. Look at my numbers. So I got plenty of time to win. And I'm going to win some. Give him his. Let him enjoy it. No, that's a great mentality. That's understated for especially his age to have that mentality. I think it gives credence to how great of a coach Pop is. Just the people that, that are around him, keeping him in the right mental state. Yeah, I think the next step for them is getting a playmaking point guard that has the ability to score and also get Victor easy field goal attempts, scoring opportunities off of their presence on the offensive end. I think that's the next step and to build on, on and continuing to add talent to that team. But the future is awfully bright. I think it's even impressive the fact of how the game has changed and it's mostly three-pointers now, mostly three-pointers and jump shots, and this dude is still making such an impact on the defensive end. He's, he's so tall, so athletic, so skilled. His understanding of where to be and, and where to get to defensively, it's awfully impressive. Even to watch him, as crazy as it sounds, he came in as a star, to watch him in the summer league uh, early on in his, this season, the growth to this point is clear and obvious. We got March Madness coming up. You excited? I would have been. What's what's that mean? I don't know if you know. St. John's didn't make the NCAA tournament. They should have. Know. They should have. They should have. It's 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 a lot of it's some controversy. You think they should have? One thousand percent. They played in a four-five game in the Big East tournament. They won that game. They then played the Yukon Huskies, the defending national champs. They played them to a five-point game, which was an awfully good game down the stretch. Lost by five. I thought they were for sure going to make the NCAA tournament. It's disappointing. And you have Coach Rick Pitino as the head coach, St. John's being back on the map. I, I, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed that they didn't get the bid. It's a tough game to play. When you when you play in college basketball, there's so many things that are out of your control. Even when you're on the coaching staff, there's analytics that say how difficult an away game is, uh, how strong your schedule was. And it's a lot of, it is a lot of nonsense. It's really pick and choose and what relationships you have and, and what mood they feel like displaying that day. And the sad part is it's a lot of young men that that's livelihood is in the balance. And the statistics say 
St. John's was somewhere in the 30s, like I believe 34 or something like that. How could you be somewhere in the 30s and not picked in a 68-team field? It makes no sense. So I'm, I'm awfully disappointed. Three teams in the Big East made the NCAA tournament. Three teams. That's, that, that makes no sense to me. And I like the way they're handling it. It's over with. Nothing you say or do is going to get you in it. Move forward and build towards the future. This is, this is a... Uh, opportunity for us to take the frustration, take the anger, and build towards the future. This brings me to something that that I I meant to bring up a minute ago with you. I don't know I don't know your feelings about it, but uh, Nick Saban recently has some statements on his retirement and why he's leaving the the college football game. What's your thoughts on his statements? I said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. All you old coaches or young coaches upset because now. The rabbit has the gun. Leave. And Nick Saban is a GOAT. He's one of the all-time great, not just college coaches, but coaches in the history of sports. He's accomplished. He deserves everything he gets. But nobody for 100 years complained about the power that the coaches had. Coaches that yelled and screamed and cussed out their players. Coaches that threatened to, to, to bench you and you had no, 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 no opportunity to transfer without sitting out a year. Or maybe they didn't allow you to transfer. Maybe when a coach leaves at the end of one successful year and goes to another team and gets a whole new deal. Maybe when a coach has a lifetime deal with a sneaker company. I mean, nobody complained for 100 years. Now all of a sudden, the, the, the players have the power, and less than a year later, we're bickering, we're complaining. Give me a break. Nick Saban and to whom it may concern. Times have changed. With all due respect. That's Say a that statement. respectfully, yeah. Say- <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. And you said it the, the political way. You said it the nice, clean cut way. And I feel it. But it's, it's undertones of, of, of a lot of other stuff when he speaks of these athletes. And I don't, I don't like it because it's cool when you're able to ride the coattail of these athletes for years, as you said. But now when we got, we got a little bit of paper, it's, you can't talk to us anymore. And that's, that's, a, that's a weird double standard. And it, it shows me, okay... Even though, as much as he was a great college football coach, where did you lose respect for these young men that you feel like they don't deserve this level of payment? As a coach, you sit there and watch these players day in and day out, pour into the game, pour into their craft, and to sit there and and almost in disgust that, wow, they're arrogant now and I can't handle them. It's a slap in the face to not only the players currently, but to the players who played for no pay who played and put in the time, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, you didn't get paid to play at St. John's. I didn't get paid to play at Louisville. I, I worked hard. You worked hard. So at the end of the day, it's things that people didn't see that, yeah, these dudes deserve to get NIL payments. Yeah, you the best player in you at, at Alabama. Yeah, get paid, sir. You know the crazy thing is? You said they're arrogant, referring to the players now. You know how many coaches have been arrogant over the Thank course you. of the year? Thank you. The years, all of these years. You know how easy it is for me to coach when I got all the power and you got to respond to everything I say? Coaching and leading is a whole different dimension when all of a sudden you're making a million dollars. You're making $500,000 and I got to find a button to push to motivate you or move you to show up to practice, to work out. Now all of a sudden I got to try different things and I got to go into my arsenal, my tool, toolbox to find things get you to be the player, the man, the person, the teammate that I want you to be. That's, that's, when it, that's the part I enjoy the most. It makes it easy if I got all the power and you, you, you can't leave me. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> and you got you to you respond and react to it or sit out. What was your mentality as a coach, coaching players that are making $200 million? How did you say, let me, let me get through to him, let me earn his respect? They want to be coached. They want to be led. And to me, it's easy. I say that with great humility. But you got to find guys that want to be great, that want to be part of a winning process, and that's willing to listen. And then all of a sudden, you push the right buttons, respectfully. Not by cussing them out, but by understanding we're in this thing together. When you win, I win. When I win, you win. And when you lose, I lose. And when I lose, you lose. So let's, 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 let's get in this thing together. And you look to try different things, whether it's a word, a phrase, whether it's nothing, whether it's practice, whether it's no practice, find ways to motivate guys and, and utilize that in teaching uh, as examples. And, and, and then the, to me, one thing you do is 
You use old school players, teams, situations, history to tell stories and allow that to be a learning lesson also. I think one thing that you always did that I saw and I've, I've taken it into my personality is uh, the vulnerability that you show, whether it be players, whether it be anybody that's, that would be considered under you. And it's so important that these coaches or anybody that's in a power position, whether you're coaching or whether you're working at an office, if you're a boss and you're, and you're speaking to your employees, it's so important to show empathy and understanding and be mindful of how, how your employees feel, you know? And that's, that's credit to my mom and dad who raised me the right way and instilled the right principles, and core values in me, made it easy for me to do. So I gotta give credit to them. I wish I could take all the credit, but that's being raised the right way and understanding at the end of the day, you are not a big deal, my friend. I mean, my mom and dad was all right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, so we we on the March Madness wave right now. What was your best March Madness moment as a player? That's easy. 1985, going to the Final Four with St. John's. Loaded, loaded basketball team. We were the number one team in the country, I believe, for six weeks. We went in as a number one seed. We wound up getting to the Final Four. And uh, we shouldn't have had to play Georgetown because we were both the two best teams in the, in the country. We should have had to play them come final matchup as opposed to the semifinals. But uh, two powerhouses matched up for the third or fourth time during the course of that season, loaded with future Hall of Fame players and great talent, two Hall of Fame coaches in the great John Thompson and the great Luke Honda Clearly the best time. Clearly the best time. That's the best time? Clearly. Out of, out of, clearly. You go, to the, you go to the Final Four in New York City, paint the Empire State. They light up the Empire State building red and white. Oh yeah, I that's mean, how, yeah, that's the different. Kings of the town. Yeah, I mean, that's it was, different. It was, it was, it was, it was unbelievable time and one I always, I always cherish. But losing, I gotta mm -hmm. say, my, my coach, Coach Connor Second, ninety nine years old, he made a mistake. Why? What, what, he didn't start me the second half. <laughs> I mean, I've been holding on to this for a long time. Yo, this dude is ninety nine. What's what's up with you? What's up with you? No, no, I'm just we we here to tell the truth. I love him. And I'm sure all that the, if you ask All them, the times that I ask you to tell the truth about all these other people, you're going to tell the truth about your 99-year-old coach? He knows how I feel. I love him. All right. No, all right. I, no, I'm, no, no, okay. no, no. I didn't know he was giving it up like that. No, 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 no. I, I, I believe that I should have started the second half of the, of the ball game. I mean, <laughs> you can tell it's something that's been bothering me for a long time now. So you got any stories of when Coach Van Gundy was coaching you on the Knicks that you... Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> One time, um, the game was over. We, 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 we were winning the game, and it was less than 10 seconds ago. I was playing for the Houston Rockets at the time. And this guy, I, t I raved about him as a coach. He doesn't miss anything. He sees everything. So I don't miss anything neither, I humbly submit. So it's the end of the game. Inbound the basketball. I got to throw it in the Yao. I throw it in the Yao. Yao dogs the attempt to go get the basketball. So they steal the ball. The game's over. They steal the ball. Okay. But still, there's two people in the arena. 20,000 fans, 15 players on one side, 15 on the other side. There's two people that are thinking about what just happened on that play. I know I'm one of them. And I know the other dude in that arena that's thinking about the same thing is Jeff Van Gundy. I turn my head immediately to the bench. This dude is standing like this. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you don't put your bottom hip back in. <laughs> and we both just started laughing. We can remember... We can talk about it. If I saw him today and asked him, he would break down the exact play that I would break it down and talk about that same scenario. That's hilarious. Unbelievable. So that, that there you have it. I, you got me throwing Jeff. That, Coach Van Gundy on the bus too. Coach Conaseca, I'm with you. I'm not letting you go out like that. You're not going. You're not going to do Coach like that. I love him. You got to tell the truth. You, yeah, but come on, man. Let him gracefully. Let him age, man. Let him enjoy his life. You know what's messed up? If I said I take it back. You, it's, it's too, too late, late now. Exactly. So too what late. are you trying it's to get out of late. me now? <laughs> I'm just saying. I just got to, you know. I'm just saying. I should have started the second your... half. Huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in other news, still staying on, on the college note, recently Jawan Howard was let go by Michigan. Was this the right decision? No. You're talking about one of the Fab Five, a guy that has done an outstanding job with the Michigan Wolverines. This year, disappointing year. I believe that what he has in the bank – as far as the success of that basketball team and what he's deposited into that university, I believe it buys him some time. On top of that, 
He had heart surgery during the course of the season. What are we doing? Juwan Howard is an outstanding human being, outstanding coach, and deserves to coach that basketball team. He'll land on his feet. I wish him nothing but the best and excited to see what the future holds for him. But absolutely not. He should not have been fired. To spin off of that, let's go to my ladies. To w- who? Huh? Who? To, huh? I, I, something about the way you say that. What's... Who, where, where are you going right now? Why are you stepping on my no. game? Get off my mat. Hold on. I'm going to my ladies for a <laughs> second. We got college basketball. I'm here with y'all. We thinking about y'all. I want to know who's winning the tournament. March Madness is a women's thing too, and it's and it's women's month. That's why I said my ladies. Hold on. Let oh me no, get I, I didn't. I didn't get comfortable, when you man. said it, I didn't get the impression that you were talking to the NCAA women's tournament. I thought you were talking about your ladies, like the, the ladies out there, you know, the, who, to whom it may concern. I'm talking to all the ladies. Okay. It's women's month, so it's okay. okay. Happy what's, women's why month. You, why you got to step on my game? No. What's your question to me now? Wow, I got to do this. You want me to do the whole thing over no, again? No. Uh, I, I got you. I got you. No, no. This is for my ladies. Once again, somebody's not here with us, but it's just us. Let me get this camera. It's just us. I love everything y'all are doing with the WNBA, college basketball. I'm excited for March Madness. So we're here today with Mr. Mark Jackson, and I want to know, who is your pick to win it all? Let me let you know so you don't think it's just you. We're with the ladies. Oh, oh the now ladies you want to be with no, the ladies. No, no. I didn't well, like the way you I, said I got it. You. But I'm, I'm, I got you. Yeah, I'm with Come them. through. I, I, I got okay. you. <laughs> Who do I pick to win it all? The easy pick, South Carolina. Don Staley in South Carolina. They're clearly the favorite, clearly the best team in the field. Similar to the way in the men's field, but I think South Carolina, if you ask me for a sleeper pick, I'll take a sleeper choice that's not really a sleeper because they're also a number one seed, but USC with Juju Watkins and the supporting cast that she has. Not just, not just women out there, playing the supporting cast role, but when she's double teamed and forced to get rid of the basketball, she has women on that team willing, ready, and able to take over the game. Young lady by the name of Forbes won the conference championship MVP, spectacular playmaking, scoring. Um, So that's a team to watch and more than capable of, at the end of the day, cutting down the nets. I agree. My pick, of course, I love those two picks. I'm with you on that. I think somebody, a team that needs uh, acknowledgement is LSU, man. I got LSU. I think that's that's my pick. That's my pick. They started off the season a little bit slow, but they cooking. We we got we got hot at the right. Yes, we we got right at the right time. We got hot at the right time. And I like the purple you wearing. Shout out to Hold LSU. Up. Don't do that. You got huh? hot at the right time. You know you lost in the conference championship game. Look, to South Carolina. Did we lose? Did we lose in the tournament? No, it didn't start. Okay, yet. that's what I'm saying, man. What, what do you think of Caitlin Clark? You think they got a chance to win it all? You got to got to. She's more than able capable of winning it. Yes, I think that they have a shot. I think my my question is defensively whether they'll be able to compete. I know offensively Caitlin's going to do what she has to do and I love the surrounding pieces around her also. I just think that their defense has been lackluster at times at times and I know going into the tournament the level of defense has to be at a certain echelon. I tell you what, we will, we will be watching. It's yeah. an exciting time for women's basketball. Not just WNBA, but college basketball. Incredible talent. And uh, they're getting a lot of recognition and deservedly so. Spinning off of that, it's it's funny. My sister, your daughter, works for the Trailblazers. And (laughs) (laughs) I love love her. But was there ever a time when we were growing up where you were like, she could could be my my Lisa Leslie? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Are you asking a serious question? Yeah, I'm dead serious. What, come on, you, as you, as a father, like you wasn't looking at her like, yo, she she might be Cheryl Swoops. Like she got a little athleticism. No, no, she is the most athletic in the family, I believe. But did I ever think that she'd make it to the WNBA? No, no, never. No, she's the she's, most athletic in the one, family. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, you played 17 <clears throat> years in the NBA. I'm not. A, what, I'm not you a saying great, today not a she's athlete. the? I, today? I wasn't a great athlete. So you saying today or just overall? Overall. You love your daughter, man. No, I love no, her too. No, no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? My, this dude's hating. <laughs> no, she can't be the best athlete in the family. That's crazy. You remember when she dunked on you in the, in the front yard? Nah, I don't remember that. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the picture and see huh? what you... <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the picture and see what you got to say off, off the, the picture. The picture? Yeah, the picture. We got a picture of it? We got a picture. Let's take a look. <laughs> 
<laughs> what you man, saying now? Man, things happen. No, man. no, no. You sitting there complaining about Caitlin Clark's Iowa State's team defense, and the defense that you just displayed against your sister in the front yard is staring as she's climbing through midair. Tomahawk Duncan over. It's my sister. I gotta, I can't, I can't. What I'm supposed to pin it against the glass? Oh uh, man, you love what, your sister. What are, <laughs> but no, no, I never thought she'd make it to the WNBA. I'm wow. extremely proud that she's a college graduate and that she's moving up the charts as far as in the NBA and working for the Portland Trailblazers. So that's that's a well deserved round of applause for her. But you no. want something else? What? Hey, how you just threw me under the bus like that again? This is crazy. How did I throw you under the bus? Tom Chambers. I got, like, <laughs> you want to talk about getting dunked on? Let's see. We got to move on, until, man. We got to move on. You want to see, see the clips? No, we got to move on. <laughs> All right, flashback time, man. Let's let's go. <laughs> I'm sure Flash, we'll get to that at some point. Flashback time, man. Let's let's go. We got you right here with Chris Mad Dog Russo. It's a nice picture, man. Legend. Legendary. Absolutely. Did he uh, did he ever criticize you on the, on the radio? Did he? Yeah. Yeah. The, the funniest time, I mean, growing up in New York City, Mike and the Mad Dog, legendary radio show, um, True Trailblazers when it, t talks to, when it comes to talk radio. Um, always talked about the Knicks, always talked about St. John's, so I'm sure. Nothing that I remember. But the one I do remember was probably six, or six months ago or so when Jeff Van Gundy was let go by ESPN. Um, I'm listening to Matt, Mike. I'm listening to Mad Dog Radio, and one day he says, "You know what? You're gonna get rid of Jeff Van Gundy, part of the greatest threesome to ever call NBA games, historic, historic booth that they had. I say if you're gonna get rid of Jeff Van Gundy, then fire Mark Jackson too." <laughs> Dang, you got it straight. I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm driving in the car. I'm like, "What the heck is going on, man?" <laughs> So that is, and then he has a whole plan. Hire Doc Rivers and get Doris Burke. I'm like, yo, dude, you mapping all my, my exit? What are we doing? <laughs> so I, I was a little upset, but uh, funny, that's who he is. Uh, obviously a Hall of Famer and one of the true greats to ever do it as far as talk radio is concerned. Somebody growing up in New York City, I can remember going on the show and my brothers and sister sitting in, on the basement floor with the phone calling in on hold to ask a question as if they were just total strangers. Uh, but fun times growing up in New York and listening to Mike and the Mad Dog. That's funny. I never knew that story. Yes. I, I love I love Mad Dog. I love especially he got, he does this look. Every time somebody talking, he just be put put his eyebrow up and just. That's sort of the look you get when you say how, my lady. How, no, that's no. not the look. <laughs> I, you see, I don't even know how to do the look. <laughs> well, I got pictures for you, though. No. Let, me, let me ask you about this picture. You remember this picture? Wow, you got the you got the how you get this picture? I got connections. Yeah, I remember this. This is at this is at Manhattan College. This is after Louisville, actually. I got this, a question though. What? After Louisville, why, why did you transfer from Louisville to Manhattan College? Oh man, uh, during that time, Uncle Troy Escalade passed away, and probably. I was living in Louisville, I was playing at Louisville, probably a month later, uh, my aunt and niece, Lonnie and Jayla, rest in peace, passed away in a, in a car accident. And uh, I remember being on the treadmill in Louisville, being with my personal trainer, and uh, I was running and mom called me and she told me, after I had already been dealing with the, the Uncle Troy news, she told me what had happened and I remember collapsing on the, on the treadmill and just being so broken. And I was so far from home that I decided, man, I need to go back back to the city. I need to be around my family. I need to be my grandmother's in Long Island at least. I need to go go out there and spend some time, be closer. So I went out to Manhattan College, and when I got there, I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't my favorite experience. Um, but you know, you make decisions, and God God brings the best out of um, what it is. And grateful, I'm grateful to. Uh, Everybody at that school it was a great opportunity, and I I wouldn't have dove into music and had the opportunity to meet Chris Gotti and Irv Gotti, and um, just just be able to even catapult and move my music career forward. So it's a it's a blessing, man. I, I I'm I'm joyous about everything that the Lord has allowed me to go through. Hey Amen. That's awesome. Yeah, man. But yeah, let's uh let's thank our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. 
Click the link in the description below. Use the promo code M-A-R-K, and they are matching up to $100. That does it for another episode of the Mark Jackson Show on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Remember, just recently it was just the uh, NFL free agency. A lot of teams upgraded their running back position. They look for guys that can have what they call yak yards, yards after contact. So Saquon Barkley went to the Philadelphia Eagles. Derrick Henry went to the Baltimore Ravens. What is so important about yak yards? They don't get stopped after the initial hit. You think I'm talking about football. I'm talking about you. You've taken a hit financially. You've taken a hit spiritually. You've taken a hit mentally. You've taken a hit in your relationship. Somebody have taken a hit in your job. You got fired. I dare you to keep it moving. You may just get a first down or a touchdown. Blessings.